The profession is changing and with it are the needs and expectations of the next generation of vets. Veterinary science courses are some of the most rigorous and demanding at our universities, but are they keeping up with the times? Well, to debate training for the future, Julie MacDonald is joined by our special studio guests. Welcome to the Vet and Review debate. On our panel today, Professor the Lord Trees, with a career spanning several decades and continents, he has a wealth of experience and is only the second veterinary surgeon to become a member of the House of Lords. A real pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Gudrun Ravitz. Now, Gudrun Ravitz has been a vet for over 10 years and is the incoming junior vice president for the British Veterinary Association. Hello to you, Gudrun. A warm welcome. Dr. Claire Allen. Now, Dr. Claire Allen is a vet and a senior teaching associate at the University of Cambridge and a representative of the Veterinary Schools Council who's worked across the curriculum both in the US and the UK. Welcome to you. Helena Diffie. Now, Helena is the president of the Association of Veterinary Students and she's in her fourth year at the Royal Veterinary College. A very warm welcome to you, Helena. Thanks very much to you all for being with us. And we're going to be talking about the future of the profession and the challenges that lie ahead. Now, currently, for those in education, there's an argument around how veterinary training should be delivered. Should organisations keep educating vets in a wide range of areas or allow them to specialise so that training isn't wasted on something that they simply don't want to do? So Claire, let's start with you. Is the current veterinary curriculum being delivered in the way that's, that's needed out there in the real world? Right. Well, I think what's um, exciting is there's a very um, dynamic discussion about just some of those issues going on um, within the veterinary education um, arena. So this, the cr veterinary curriculum is no longer a static um, thing that doesn't change. I think we're getting much better about responding to the needs of the veterinary profession. Um, and that tension that you talked about between sort of trying to be to, to train our students to be omnicompetent versus specialization actually I think is a, is a really important tension to maintain in many ways because it's helping us to think about um, how we want to train students not just for the way that the profession has been but the way that the profession is evolving to be in the future. Because I guess that's one of the big challenges isn't it? It's, it's almost training people not for today but, but right. for tomorrow and right. in 10 years time. Helen I wanted to, to ask you do you think people have a realistic view of, of what being a vet actually means? Um, yes, I think um, that students do have a very realistic view. I mean, we spend quite a lot of our training in practice. Um, we know what we're getting ourselves in for. Um, I guess um, the issue that's been discussed quite a lot at the moment is the sort of perception um, amongst applying students, whether they know the breadth of um, opportunity within the veterinary profession um, and sort of other things outside clinical practice. Sandy, is that a challenge in itself then that people have a, a sort of narrow idea perhaps of what being a vet in practice actually means? Yes, I think it is a real challenge, but I think what we're trying to do really in education is uh, fulfil omnipotential. Uh, I don't think uh, at the point of graduation we expect uh, all vets to be able to do all things. Uh, we're trying to create someone who has the potential then to go on and perhaps specialise in different areas. Gudrun, what's your view? Should vets specialise earlier in their career? I know it's different in different parts of the world. What's your view? So I do think that we need to look at, at how we're doing it. Can we look at a role of combining that core area of the science with the practice, but perhaps making it a more modular? So when you come to your clinical areas, you can maybe cherry pick some of the modular side, which would include the non-clinical things that practice needs, such as business, empathy, resilience, all those other kind of things, and you actually come out with a, a portfolio degree that is on your CV. You still have the omnipotential because you maybe go back to that. How important, and I guess I'm asking this to you all, but Helena, I want to start with you, are, are the elements of business skills that are required? I mean, everything today is increasingly corporatised, and I know that the veterinary industry is very, very similar, even at practice level. So just how important is that, and how widely available are those skills in the curriculum? Um, so, yeah, I think we all realise that it's a very important subject that we need to learn more about. Um, I think currently at vet schools, it is part of the curriculum at most, most vet schools, um, but maybe I think the level is too basic at the moment. Perhaps we need, we need some more, but at a higher level, we need to be challenged in what we're doing, um, because I think a lot of the business skills that we do get taught at vet school um, are perhaps 
too easy and therefore aren't engaging. But there is a finite limit what you can get in five years. And so I think, you know, I think we, we have to accept that and, and recognise there may be areas we, can, we must deal with uh, post-graduation to specialise. So if I look at my uh, career, I started in one direction and I myself have thought, I want to do a bit of this, I want to do a bit of that. So mm. because I specialised quite early on, it didn't preclude me, but I had to go back to it and I, I don't see that as a problem. So I think if you do go down the path, there's always a worry you've gone down the wrong path. But that's the great thing with a veterinary degree. You have that ability to change, to adapt. So I, I do think that's an area that you know, we're not going to get everything in there, but how do we do that for the people who want it? It sounds to me like everything in the world now. We need everything to more be... Time. More time, more flexibility, more nimbleness. Guys, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much to all of you for your input.